You're listening to the Weekend Sport Podcast with Jason Pine from Newstalk ZB. Speaking of basketball, Kiwi legend Kirk Penny has become just the second New Zealander to earn selection into FIBA's International Basketball Hall of Fame. Bradshaw will give it. There's Penny! And that's what he likes to do. He likes to come off screens. Here's Penny. He'll shoot the three. It's gone. Here's Kirk Penny. He shoots the three. And Penny gets it to go. Spots up. Shoots it. Let's it go. Oh, my goodness. Nothing but that from Kirk Penny. Yeah, the Tall Blacks icon will join Pedro Cameron, who was selected in 2017 as a FIBA Hall of Famer. Kirk Penny is one of seven players to be inducted in 2024 with the official ceremony to take place in Singapore Later in the year, he made his New Zealand debut as an 18-year-old and quickly cemented himself in the side during a golden run for the national team, including that very famous fourth-placed finish at the 2002 FIBA World Championships. Kirk Penny played at two Olympic Games and was the only Kiwi male to appear in four World Cups in an international career spanning 15 years. He also captained New Zealand in 21 of the 179 games he played for the Tall Blacks and is one of just three New Zealanders to feature in the NBA. Kirk Penny is with us. Congratulations on this wonderful accolade. Kirk, how much does an honour like this mean to you? Oh, it's an honour. It's absolutely an honour. And I have another New Zealander. Um, I think in the Hall of Fame is, is awesome. Um, obviously, Piro went in there several years ago and... Um, you know, we've, there's a few of us, or a lot of us that have given a lot to just put New Zealand basketball on the map, and I think it's, you know, it's just a testament to all of a lot of hard work by by the team, the, the, the coaches, the you know support staff in basketball New Zealand itself, just to, um, you know, continue the success we've had. Such an incredible career you forged. What are you most proud of? Ah. Uh, I think from a New Zealand standpoint, obviously there's, to me, I kind of see it as it was my college career, uh, high school career, college career, and then my professional career. But in terms of the national team duties, um, I think the Olympics, you know, were special. We got to play in two of them. Um, the four World Cups were, were all neat in their own way. Um, obviously, there's only one team that gets to win and everyone else has a, a taste of disappointment. But 2002 will continue to just to, you know, be so meaningful because we, we were good enough to win a World Cup um, in the sport of basketball or football. That it's doesn't roll off your tongue very easily. Um, but, yeah, I think we always got through to the, the, the rounds where we needed to to be in the elimination games. And I just think for the teams we were able to assemble, um, we just, I think we always really batted above our average and did a great job. Apart from several terrific players in that 2002 team, what was so special about it and what stands out most vividly when you reflect back over two decades now? I think we competed. We just competed and we had a belief in ourselves that we could beat anyone. And I also think positionally, we had everything covered. You know, we had a couple of good point guards, a couple of good wings, some good power forwards, some good centres and um, in that semi-final, not having Sean Marks play through his eye injury, I think that that made a different made a difference for us. Um, and it would have been good of, good to have him there, you know, in that game. But you know, with Mark Pickle at point, Paul and Ari backing him up, Philly and I on the wings, and Bill Belch backing us up, and then Pero and and Sean and 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 you know, good players backing them. But we just positionally kind of covered everything. And you do notice at the national level, national team level, when you do have a player or you have a position that's not covered well, it does make a big difference. You're eating alive. And I just think that was a – we had a generation there for about 10 years where we could really, you know, compete at the international level very well. And other teams did too. You know, like Argentina kind of had the same generation during that run with Scholar and Ginobili. And, and um, Spain had the same generation with the Gasol boys and Navarro and – and Calderon and uh, Fernandez. So they kind of, you kind of played the same, a lot of the same guys over that, get those generations and um, got to know them really well. And I obviously played with a lot of them professionally in Europe as teammates. And and that was always really special. You know, you, you'd have, I mean, the Lithuanian entire team was my teammates up in Jalgeris and Kaunas and then 
I'd go and play them at the international level and that, that added another, you know, sort of element to it, wanting to kick their butt. But, um, and it took away any intimidation. You knew them, you knew them well, you knew all their warts and you wanted to take it to them. Uh, well, talk, speaking of Lithuania, 2010 uh, World Champs in Turkey, 37 points against them in the opening game that New Zealand played, second highest scorer in the tournament, averaging nearly 25 points a game. How much personal pride do you take in numbers like that? Um, yeah, I had a. Oh, I was. I mean, it was honestly though. I've got Mick of a Conner screening for me. I got great guys getting me open, and yeah, I got to enjoy the scoring part of it. Um, but you know, in, a, in an event like that, everyone was remarkable. You know, as Tom Abercrombie had an incredible rebounding game. That was kind of his coming up party as a as a player as well. And I think um, Nina did a great job with the two and tab before him, just giving us belief and and. Um, understanding that we could compete but like that game for example that whole of one you've seen with my teammates three years ago so <laughs> personally i'm trying to kick all their butts because i love them and yeah we'd had a hot vodka and a jacuzzi up in on the russian border but at the same time i'm like hey, let's go at it you know so um yeah so for me going against those boys i felt like they knew me and i knew them and and uh, I just wanted to try and get New Zealand over the hump. We weren't able to, but you know, obviously individually it was a decent performance. And just to finish, Kirk, you're being inducted alongside some some fairly elite players, a couple of the elite shooters in the game, Richie Miller, Paya Stoyakovic. What does it mean to you to see your name in the sentence alongside guys like that? Oh, it's truly incredible. I was actually just talking to Paja a couple of weeks ago um, about his son, Andre, who's at Stanford and college basketball has gone a bit wild and become a professional world now we're paying them a lot of money and um it was good just to chat with him and and then obviously it was revealed who else was in the class with me a couple of days ago and awesome pages in there i got to play him a few times and and reggie miller is uh, you know one of those players i grew up watching and and had so much um respect for and would always love watching him play even though my shot looked very different to his had a unique <laughs> stroke but um, no, just a, a rem- amazing. You know, I think when you first see it, I was like, did you get this right? Am I supposed to be on this list too? Um, that's obviously a natural Kiwi response. Um, but yeah, I mean, just awesome. And, and I'm just happy for the game in New Zealand. And uh, we always try to trailblaze and, and just want to create a path for the next generation. And that was always important to us. And hopefully it's just, this is just another one of those things. Well, your uh, ability matched only by your humility, mate. Congratulations, Kirk. It's a a wonderful achievement, uh, one for all New Zealand basketballers. Thanks for the chat this afternoon. You're welcome. Awesome. See you, mate. See you later on. That's Kirk Penny uh, inducted into the FIBA International Basketball Hall of Fame. Just the two New Zealanders in there, Kirk Penny and Pedro Cameron. What a player Kirk Penny was. For more from Weekend Sport with Jason Pine, listen live to News Talk ZB weekends from midday or follow the podcast on iHeartRadio.